Hi there, and welcome to another live stream. Uh, thanks for coming along. I've got a few comments already logged in, and um, Richard is just sneaking in through the back door. So he's going to come on in a second, and he's going to say hello. Uh, and we'll get cracking as soon as... Um, soon as we like but it's very nice to see everybody uh we're under the lovely sunny blue skies here in the uk so summer started today i think <laughs> about four months late right richard can you hear me sir i can indeed ah, How are you? good i'm very well how's your big move going slowly <laughs> 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 yeah it's getting there we're getting Would you want to tell us, uh, tell us a bit about it? it uh, so we're moving from uh, the shop on the high street into a warehouse and into uh, a market stall. Um, so the e-com side of the business has, has outgrown the current premises. Um, so rather than um, losing potentially some of the, the footfall from the local area that we've built up over the years, um, we've decided to move into two locations. So, yeah, it's... Uh, all hands on deck currently, but yeah, going well. It's going well. Um, we've had a few little niggles through the e-com side um, this week, but that's to be expected. So apologies to to any of you guys who are um, loyal followers and customers of mine who have experienced issues. But we we've uh, we've addressed those, and we should be firing on all cylinders moving forward. But yeah, yeah. exciting stuff. Yeah, that's good. Well, in my glass here, I have a lemon um, really? keto pro made electrolyte. So I'm just interested. I didn't tell you this. Tomorrow I'm doing a water fast. What are your views on a water fast? My views, yeah, fantastic. It's um, I I always take electrolytes regardless of um, whether I'm fasting or not. But water fast is fantastic. How long are you implementing one for, Steve? I'm just going to do it for, for Monday, basically. Go to bed tonight and Good. wake up on Tuesday, having not had any uh, fluids. Brilliant. Fantastic. Yeah, I need to get uh, some fasting on the go. And I've just realized that I can't zoom in on my camera, so you've got a gap on the side there. But never mind. Ah, so, well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I, you know, I for whatever reason, it's not, it's not zooming in, but never mind. So, All right. Sorry. Not as yeah. streamlined as we normally are. <laughs> well, yeah, but I've got all this rubbish behind me, haven't I? So <laughs> yeah, that's, that all looks no, good, though, doesn't it? That's all part and parcel. Well, oh, of, thank of you. The clinic. And, and that's, a, that's a real plant, by the way. This, um, anyway, right. Um, the other thing I meant to say, at 8 o'clock we're doing a live stream on a different platform, but we can't mention their name, but I will put the link in the um, comments. Because if you do live streams on other platforms, YouTube don't like it. So that's... Uh, We'll talk about that later. But we got a few comments. Do you want to have a look straight away at the comments? Let's fire away. Yeah. Let's go so for it. TLV. Hello, chaps. Might not make the live, but I really wanted to ask you both this. When you first went carnivore, at what point, time scale, did you start to notice your body using more fat? That's a good question. Um, now, there's a subsidiary thing here because it's a lot. It's a, he's put it in a few parts uh, as in losing fat i'm asking this because i've noticed i'm losing it around my arms and thighs while also building muscle in both areas without working out much i'm not doing this to just lose fat uh one more bit i think i've become an involuntary i've became an involuntary vegan 10 years ago because of health conditions after breaking my back i was so weak uh last year and this until i decided i needed me feel amazing and starting my third month there you go big question yeah so i mean it um for me i was already heavily ketogenic for for many years before becoming carnivore um most of my fat if not all of it was probably already into the lower single figures um what I did notice when I went carnivore was that I was able to build muscle a lot quicker. Um, because I'd already lost the fat, it was difficult for me to gauge whether, you know, I was gaining or losing it at, at a slower or, or quicker rate. But I definitely noticed that muscle building had increased. And the reason being is we've removed these phytoalexins, these plant toxins 
the lectins and the phytic acids, uh, amongst other things, that block the absorption of things like zinc, iron, and magnesium, which are essential for the production of things like testosterone, uh, which is essential for both men and women. Uh, even in women, all estrogen was once testosterone. Um, but that's what a lot of people don't realize. So when we, you know, I, I work with a lot of people uh, and train with a lot of people from the, the carb community, uh, as well as the carnivore keto community. People think that I'm anti-carbohydrate. I'm not anti-carb. Um, it's what comes with those carbs and, and understanding the downstream deleterious effects of excess carbohydrate consumption, but more so in regards to what comes along with that carbohydrate. So, you know, pasta, for example, contains lectins and phytic acid. Now, if your goal is to improve athletic performance and build muscle, become healthier and fitter and stronger, faster, that is absolutely counterintuitive. We need to take a step back and think, what are we putting this pasta in for? Um, we are told that, you know, we need carbohydrates for fuel. Um, yeah, carbohydrates give you fuel, but it's not optimal fuel. Uh, we're told that it builds muscle. You know, we know time and time again from conversations and the lives that we have done, uh, Stephen, that um, carbohydrates do not build muscle. Um, you know, that theory comes back to this this increase in insulin and, and further fuel in muscle protein synthesis, but it has no effect on building muscle. So it's purely energy based. And we know the ketones supply superior energy. So what is the other advantage? Um, bar potentially pulling in water uh, and increasing muscle volume and maybe therefore increasing leverage and possibly strength. Um, nothing at all, because we can also manipulate this with things like creatine and, and salts, electrolytes, etc. cetera. Um, but what comes of that pasta? It's that those lectins and those phytic acids, which are blocking the body's ability to heal, repair and recover. So you were doing yourself an injustice by putting those foods in. Uh, and that's why I think that I noticed that I gained muscle a lot easier, a lot quicker. My body was repairing uh, a lot quicker. But the fat for me, um, yeah, as I say, I'd already lost, you know, my fat by the time I became carnivore. So I can't really comment on that. But I would argue that um, coming coming towards carnivore is going to have a similar impact because the lectins will bind to insulin receptors and tell the body to store five times more fat than insulin does itself. And all veg contains lectins. Uh, all that veg contains you know, the phytic acids and other phytoalexins and plant toxins, which are going to slow down your body's ability to absorb and assimilate these, um, you know, the nutrients and, and things that are, that are, are in there. Um, so carnival for me is definitely the creme de la creme. Um, time scale. I mean, I can't, I can't how much muscle I don't know how much muscle I was gaining, but it, you know, I was certainly gaining muscle at, at a quicker rate, but again, fat, I can't comment on Steve. I don't know if you've got anything that you'd want to add to that in regards to the time scale that you noticed your body losing more fat, but I was already fairly lean by the time I became carnivore. Well, I think when I went carnivore, um, within three months, my body composition had changed dramatically. So when I look at pictures of me when I was keto, so at age 50, I went low carb. 50, um, 55 was the time I went um carnivore and in between that i did a period of keto and when i look back at the pictures of me being keto i i just think i look gaunt i was definitely lighter on the scale but i don't i don't think i looked as good as within three months of doing carnivore i just seemed to be more fat adapted very quickly um muscle mass went up by about well over a year it went up over nine pounds that was also i instigated x3 so it was a big, it was a big step up in protein consumption as well. I've never increased my muscle by that much ever, and I doubt I'll ever do it again. And uh, my testosterone went up thirty percent in two months. You know, at age fifty-five, that is amazing. So Carnival did lots and lots of different things for me, and possibly the increase in testosterone had a huge impact on the muscle mass as well and <laughs> usage of fat for energy. So. I think the answer I'm giving is very different to Rich, and I think it will be very different for everybody because we've all got a different journey up until that point. So if you come to it and you're, you know, let's be honest, you know, so let's say 100 pounds overweight, it's going to be drastic. It's going to be drastic, and um, that would be quick, very quick. I mean, I, I, I have coached clients that within – 
well, the quickest, I think, within two weeks, someone was like, I just can't believe how good this is. I want to tell everybody. And I had to say, don't, please don't become a vegan. And, and, and the first thing you say to anyone is, I'm carnivore. It's amazing. Look, just uh, just calm down. But it, but it can be very, very quick. And for those people that are watching that have tried it and they're still trying to heal or they've got thyroid problems or their body composition is not going the right way, they've got joint pains, whatever. For some people, it's a long time. Sometimes it's six months to really start seeing the benefits. So um, if after uh, 20 weeks, plus or minus six, you're still having problems, and that's when I think, you know, you not you might need to sort of join a community, get a little bit of guidance to see what's going wrong. But um, I, I would say if you've never been carnivore, within a couple of weeks you'll notice some differences. That doesn't mean good or bad because differences could be toilet habits. But I think you start to fat burn, well, use utilize fat, I should say. So anyway, uh, very quickly. Right. I've got some nice housekeeping. Carnivorous Dutch giant Toms just says good evening. Uh, and this is Vitalijus, I think. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, good evening guys. Saying, yeah, I was uh, just looking at all those now. Yeah, I was just going to reply and then I thought I... Yeah, it's probably better for you to ping them up one by one than me uh, reply yeah. to the messages one by one. But Matthew, uh, Matthew, good, good evening, gentlemen. You. Nice to see you all. This is Peace Book. Good evening, Alphas. Way uh, too kind. <laughs> Carst, uh, Carsten has put, hello, friends. What do you think about dry fasting? We've talked about it. If you've got any comments, if you've tried it, if you've got questions, that'd be good. So I think... Bit of housekeeping for you, Rich. Carnivorous Dutch Giant Tom. Sorry to ask, and I know you're really busy, Richard. Shot you an email about a question I had. And also, on top of this, I have a question here. So here's his question here. If, if you think, you know, Rich is just ignoring your emails, you should see what he's doing. He's, he's <laughs> unbelievable amounts of work at the moment. Yeah. Um, Let me just jump in there as well, Steve. Apologies. Yeah. I, I am a couple of weeks behind, behind on emails. It's... Um... I've been working stupid amounts of hours around the clock over the last few weeks. Lots of big changes going on uh, within the business. And I, in fact, I've got, there's two different email platforms that I've got. I've got 63 emails on one, 51 on another that I haven't worked through. And that doesn't include any of the social media messages. So I, I've barely been replying to any of these. Um, not intentional. Uh, and apologies. I will get to them eventually, I promise. It's, uh, yeah, unfortunately, there's, there's not enough hours in the day currently, but um, but I am getting there. We will get there eventually. I think yeah. uh, Steve noticed last week that I was probably a little bit worse for wear. Um, <laughs> all of this work, despite being carnivore, catches up uh, eventually. But um, but we're getting there. We are getting there. So I will reply yeah. eventually, I promise. Yeah, but you see, the thing is, Rich, if you're going to get into the ancestrally appropriate diet, we're not living in an ancestrally appropriate life, are we? We're surrounded not by computers and emails. and Yeah. So, that. I mean, just to put it into perspective, my average work in day is about 18 hours, um, and I do work seven days a week. Um, it's probably been seven years since I've, I've had a day off. Sunday is a little bit more relaxed in regards to when I wake up, um, but I've been... Um, I've been out for a ride with, with the, the missus today, uh, which is training. Um, you know, you can argue whether that's work or, or, or you know, a, a hobby. But I mean, it, um, it's all part and parcel with, in regards to keeping fit, healthy and, and the business. But straight after that, we were straight back in into the office. And that's where I have been since two o'clock this afternoon after riding. So and, and now, you know, I'm still here carrying on with the life. So every day is a working day. Um, I am trying my best. Apologies, but I, I will get to all of the messages. I've got so many on Instagram. And Steve, you, you've seen yourself. I've been neglecting your messages as well. It's yes, the second yeah. that I look at my phone, um, I get, and if I reply to a message, I, you know, obviously I'll get another one straight back in, in reply to that. And I just haven't got the time to start going through these messages in detail. And I'd rather give the time, uh, energy that the messages deserve when I have that time uh, and, and answer them correctly rather than just giving a quick one word answer here and there. Um, but I am getting some Tom, apologies. It, uh, I'm working my way through slowly. Yeah, but I mean, it's a common problem, isn't it? Um, Self-employment. It's um, yeah. the joys of work. And, you know, unfortunately, I don't have uh, a, a job. You know, th this is this is my life. Um, 
Uh, my wife and I have put everything we own into the business. Uh, a lot of my time is given for free in regards to the coaching, the consultations, the lives, you know, the the podcasts. Um, but the business still needs to turn a profit. So I, you know, it's X amount of hours per day needs to be put into into the office work. And unfortunately, otherwise. I won't be able to do what I do. I won't be able to do this with you, Steve, and, and likewise with yourself. You know, you, you do the coaching, which you don't push enough during these lives as well. So, if, you know, for those of you that don't know, uh, Steve is a coach and he does offer services. Um, and you never push that. But if you don't push those things, then you can no longer continue to spread the good word. And then nobody benefits. So, you know, I think we both need to probably push what we do in regards to our, our jobs a lot more. But um yeah, that's yeah, my let's, let, yeah we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely look at that. Carnivorous Dutch giant Tom has this question then. So he trained legs on Wednesday and it's now Sunday and he's still sore applying eccentric. Uh, I don't know what the eccentric next bit movements. is. Yeah, I would reckon it's that. Uh, might I be doing too much? So Sunday, no, so with eccentric training on legs, we're, we're stronger on the eccentric movements. Um, I, when I began doing eccentric movements, we are in one respect causing more damage because of the load, but we're causing less damage to the tendons and, and the myofascia um, and various other things in the body that prevent us from, from, from training. So that, that's muscle fatigue. It's mus mus muscle, um, uh, it, it's due to training. So some days I could not train, some weeks I could not train twice in one week in regards to legs. Um, Perfectly normal. Uh, it just means it sounds like you've had an, an incredible session. Uh, and it just goes to show that those eccentric movements are doing a lot more than the concentric that maybe you were doing previously. So listen to your body. Don't try to fit a schedule. Um, don't train it if it's still hurting. If you are going to train a muscle group, if it's still in pain, then do, um, do active recovery training. And there Steve goes. Um, active recovery training, much lighter weights. Um, you know, for example, for me on the bike now, you know, if my legs are still in pain, I would spin on the bike rather than pushing with power. Uh, and that's the type of thing that we want to be doing on the legs now is if, if, you know, keep them moving, go in and do a light session, uh, with very low resistance just to get the blood flow in there, but perfectly normal. I wouldn't be concerned at all. Yeah. And I just want for people that don't know, shortening your muscle is concentric, lengthening your muscle is eccentric and no movement is isometric okay just want to know that's it because um, not everyone knows rich you see not everyone knows that room uh, is absolutely everything it's your um <laughs> it's your, your podcasting room your consulting room your therapy room your gym <laughs> what, what else have you got under that table <laughs> right oh what loads of i got a knee I've got a knee if people want to, uh, you know, have a look at a knee joint. Anyway, right. But, yes, I, I would also answer, probably, uh, do you know uh, carnivorous Dutch joint, John Tom? Because we, Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right, you do. Right, okay, so that's great. Okay. If someone else asks a question, we need probably more information to give you such an in-depth answer. Art Master Studio TV. Hi, guys. I'm thinking of trying steak and eggs, cutting out pork and chicken. Any benefits from this, do you think? Also cutting out cream and cheese. Yeah, so there is an argument that chicken and pork contain much higher levels of linoleic acid. Well, in fact, they do. We know they do. Um, up to 10 times more linoleic acid. The question is, is it actually causing an issue? Now, we know linoleic acid does because it's oxidized when it's in uh, an oil form. But the argument would be that linoleic acid from fresh meat is non-oxidized. So many would argue that there is no, you know, sort of downstream deleterious effects of, of consuming pork and chicken, uh, despite that higher quantity of linoleic acid. Um, but, you know, that said, and I, I haven't found any research to back up that argument one way or another. Um, but I personally preference red meats, as in steak and eggs, um, over pork and chicken. I do eat pork, I do eat chicken, but 80% of my food comes from, from beef uh, and from eggs. Um, I eat, I do eat a lot of cheese. If I'm looking to drop a little bit of weight, I will drop the cheese because the amount of fat per gram uh, is quite high in cheese and cream, cream especially if you're looking to lose a little bit of weight. 
Uh, cream has got to be the first thing to go and cut down on the cheese. Um, I am a lover of cheese. I think that there is benefit to taking it. Many would argue that it comes in under the same umbrella as bread and milk, but I would argue against that in regards to how it's made. The enzymes that are used to create it remove a lot of, uh, of the nasties in there. Uh, I find cheese is, is, is incredibly good for day-to-day -day use for supplying quality fats uh, on longer rides and snacks and a good source of protein. But if the goal is to cut down on losing a little bit of body fat, cream is the first thing to go. Cheese, at least massively reduce. But go and steak and eggs, yeah, I, you know, try it. It's 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 certainly something that, that I implement, um, as I say, as an 80-20 rule generally. I'm not against the chicken, but you know, there is that argument that it does contain a lot higher linoleic acid, especially if the chicken is fed grains. Obviously, you know, we're trying to avoid grains. Um, and then we're eating it in, in our chicken. But um, it's difficult to find grass-fed chicken, isn't it? But uh, but again, you could argue the opposite, that we don't eat plants, yet we eat the cows that eat the plants because their bodies are designed to process it. So there's arguments from both ways. But I, I, going steak and eggs, that's my my creme de la creme. It, um, that is the, uh, um, the pinnacle for me, and that's what I tend to do as an 80-20 rule. Yeah, that's that's good. I'm, I mean, the thing is, the argument with the cow against the the chicken or the pig is, you know, pigs are monogastric, whereas you know, cows are multi-chambered stomachs, so they have more processing. And uh, and even the word ruminant comes from the Latin for re-chewing. So I mean, what you know, basically, when people knew about animals and they called it ruminants, it wasn't because it roams. Some people think it's that. It's because they chew and they chew and they chew, and then when it gets inside them, it goes through four different processes. So you know, when people used to understand nature, but my two penalties, yeah, I think steak and eggs would be a good thing to try. Don't forget, people try uh, the BBBE you know, which is beef, uh, butter, bacon, and eggs. And that seems to be successful. And other people just like variety. And you can you can look at fish and fowl. There's many different ways to do carnivore and very, many different ways to be um, ketogenic. Fish is well, um, you know, within our community, it's well uh, under-regarded, I think. Um, especially in the UK, uh, many of us sort of living on the coast. I think we would have eaten a lot of, of fish. Um, I'm a big lover of fish. Uh, I don't eat mm. enough. I do eat fish regularly, uh, mackerel, sardines, salmon. Um, I love all types of fish, but I think that there's, we don't push fish enough. Uh, I'm not saying that we have to have it, but it, it does it does contain a lot of omega-3s, which have been known to show um, big positive effects in fighting things like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and dementia. Um, and we can go into the weeds again, into that in regards to the neurotransmitters in the brain and uh, homocysteine and everything else. But Omega-3 fish, fantastic. If you wanted to put that in as well, just, uh, yeah, thought I'd chuck that Yeah, in. it's good. I mean, and, and why don't we go into the next message, which is Vitalijus, who is celebrating three years. Woo three years anniversary this week. Well Love done. Uh, just so you know, I mean, that, that message was posted at 11 minutes past, and it's now 25 minutes past. So if you put a question in the comments and you think we're not answering it, it's because we give a full answer. We don't just give you a very quick, answer we trying to give you a full answer so therefore we will get to you so don't don't worry about retyping your question because you know we have an answer for 10 minutes anyway andy andy's by max anyway uh what do you think about hcl betaine i tried kind of what and failed sadly i think i couldn't digest the meat fat correctly hcl is a Ooh, unsure. Have you got any thoughts? Well, yeah. I mean, that's that's trying to get your stomach acid up. And um, if you're having trouble digesting the meat stroke fat, more often than not, it's actually a fat, especially if you've come from a low fat diet or vegan diet, vegetarian, even the standard uh, sort of Western diet, because your bile production is probably not up to scratch. So if you try carnivore and fail because you can't digest, it could be because you've transitioned too quickly. It could be that you're, you're eating too much fat and protein in one meal, and maybe you need smaller meals with a bit more frequency just to train your body and get your bile production up. And it is a little bit of a, a virtuous circle because the more you eat, well, let's say you eat a steak, it, 
you know, food isn't passive. It goes into your stomach, it breaks up and it signals to the body to do stuff. So as soon as the amino acids are broken down and, you know, there's the presence of taurine, taurine will speak um, to basically to your system to get the bile production up and you will be able to produce more bile because you'll have more fats going into your body. And, you know, as all these sort of bits of the jigsaw improve, as you eat this way more and more, everything becomes a bit easier. So in the first instance, yeah, you might find it a bit difficult to adapt. Uh, you might be just trying too much fat. But um, uh, I'm not a great believer in supplements to improve your stomach acid because your stomach acid will go up with this way of eating and also taking out the stuff that's ruining your system. So, um, But some people use it, uh, the HCL, as a sort of – bridge to help them and it seems to help them some people do apple cider vinegar some people take digestive enzymes <coughs> some, some people take ox bile but uh, in the end you want your body to catch up you don't want to be exceeding your body's natural capacity so it's probably better to look at how you're eating and the frequency and the timing and the uh, quantity before you look at supplementation you're right with that rich sorry for you know, okay good <coughs> Yes, yeah, right. Fantastic, okay. yeah. Uh, carnivorous Dutch giant Tom. Sorry, didn't mean to be rude. Much love for what you guys do. That's all right. It was not rude. Not no at problem all. at all. No worries. Oh, that's great. Uh, Rick here. Um, computers, sure, but some of us spend a lot of time outside. Yes, Rick, that's very true. I was just trying to say that in most cases, most people are not doing what humans should do uh, or what we're really designed to do. You know, indoors, fluorescent lighting being stressed, driving cars too fast, those sort of things can make it difficult to live a species appropriate life. But yes, you're right. And I know you're very outdoorsy and uh, I, I was actually singing your praises on another live stream just now, uh, actually. Uh, so there you go. Right. Because somebody said, oh, show me one carnivore who's been long term and is not bald. But so within 30 seconds, I said, well, Rick, and here's his success story. <laughs> So that shut that person up. Right, here we go. Just Emma. That's Emma. Hello, Emma. Hello, everyone from Southern California. I've experienced so many benefits from eating meat. It's been slow gains, but I'm learning a lot about my body and my relationship with food. I mean, that's that's another thing. You get to understand food better, I think, when you're carnivore. Satiety signals and hunger signals, which brings us on to Zachy, uh, Zachiarius, I think. Anyway, good evening. Any tips on satiety, stroke, leptin resistance, etc.? Strict carnivore or meat, salt, water and butter only, but I've never felt full, really. I can legit eat seven, sorry, seven, three to four kilograms of meat daily. That's good. Yeah, it. Um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with eating that sort of volume as long as it's not having any downstream effects on on energy and digestion. Um, how much do I eat? Yeah, I, I probably eat maybe two comfortably in a day, uh, give or take. But I mean, a lot of leptin resistance comes from uh, emulsifiers and lectins. Uh, lectins in particular will block leptin. They'll block body's ability to, to release leptin. But if you're, if you're carnivore, then you're probably not consuming any of those. Um, I think it's probably just time. Um, strict carnivore. How, how long you've been carnivore would be, would be a question. Um, but other ways that you can release satiety signaling so we can consume more um, saturated fats and omega-3s, omega-3s in particular, uh, increase cholecystokinin, which um, will uh, allow us to feel full and satisfied. We can um, uh, stimulate melanocyte stimulating hormones through UVA from the sun. So getting out into the sun in early in the morning and later in the day uh, will increase MSH. Um, and what else can we do? Uh, glutamine is an amino acid that can block satiety signaling as well. So I think if um, you'd be hard pushed, if you went to eat um, oily fish, uh, mackerel, sardines, I don't think you're going to be able to eat an awful lot. It's surprising. Sort of one little tin, for example, of, of, you know, of mackerel or two tins. You'd be surprised how full you feel after consuming that amount of mackerel and omega threes. So, um, yeah, three tips there. So melanocyte stimulated hormone, CCK, cholecystokinin, uh, and glutamine as an amino acid um, before eating. Those three things can uh, can massively impact and, and help curb hunger. But getting out in the sun is really important. Something I don't do enough, especially early in the morning when UVA is low 
in the sky and later in the day. Um, I don't do enough of uh, of, of grounding or, or sun exposure, to be honest. Unfortunately, I'm stuck in a cave for most of the day. But yeah, things are going to change. Yeah, and I think once your insulin resistance goes down or your insulin sensitivity or however you want to word it, um, you will see an improvement in uh, satiety signaling and leptin resistance. So um, if you... If you if you sort of do like a thought experiment, experiment if, if you've got high levels of insulin, then that is saying to your body that um, you need to store fat. That's what it's doing. And obviously, it's going to put excess energy, so to speak, into the fat stores. Now, if it's uh, doing that, it will also shut down your muscles to conserve to conserve energy. That That's sort of like physiologically sensible isn't it if you've if your job is to shovel in some fat somewhere then the last thing you want to be doing is using up the fat somewhere else so that's partly what insulin does and it's if you can follow this line of reasoning so insulin is in excess so therefore it puts energy into fat stores therefore it shuts down energy output from the muscles uh, and therefore you feel sort of sluggish and um, you feel like you're trying to conserve energy. So you get a bit of brain fog as well. And <laughs> that can actually trigger you to feel like you need to eat to get the energy. So once you fix the insulin, you start to regain energy. And then you sort of spontaneously will see that maybe you want to exercise and also you feel fuller. So it's just a little um, little bit of a flow chart there to think about. Right, uh, Matthew, I hope that made sense. Anyway, Matthew, I have eaten salmon or trout every day this week, which is good. Um, exercise recovery has improved, and I have more energy well than done. just eating red meat. Yeah, is, yeah. is it the increased amount of omega-3 and different nutrient profile? Yeah, the omega-3s are highly anti-inflammatory. So whenever I'm – so I used to work with um, Shane Williams, ex-rugby player, now um, uh, Ironman triathlete. Um, he still uh, teeters between low carb and, and ketogenic, but we worked together for um, for his prep last year. Um, and what I wanted him to do was to consume three tins of um, uh, of mackerel or sardines per day, but he didn't like fish, so we had to supplement. Now I'm not a lover of supplementing with omega threes because they can also oxidize in as little as twenty days. Uh, but with him, we didn't have an option. Um, but it made a massive difference for, to recovery. And this is one of the things that I implement uh, for my recovery is, is high omega-3. Absolutely incredible for uh, anti-inflammatory purposes and recovery. Um, and BHB, which is in my coffee, beta hydroxybutyrate blocks NLRP3 inflammasone and helps you inc recover incredibly quickly. But omega-3 is massive fan. Again, it uh, put those in for recovery. If you are aching, eat more omega-3s. Great answer. Uh, Madav. Hi, guys. I quit every day sticking to carnivore diet. Any tips, please? Um, I think I, this is such a broad question, isn't it? It's, um, yes. uh, why, why are you struggling to stick with it? Uh, it would be the first question. Um, I think sometimes when we understand, it's, it's usually sh food addiction, sugar addiction, Um and this is controlled by the neurotransmitters in the brain, especially the pursuit for dopamine. Um, if we are consuming foods that are blocking the catecholaminergic neurotransmitters in the brain, our, body, our body's ability to create neurotransmitters, then we can feel sad and depressed. Um, to create these neurotransmitters, we need amino acids like tryptophan and tyrosine and cofactors like zinc, iron, and vitamin B12. All of these things are blocked by other foods that we eat in regards to lectins and phytic acids, uh, emulsifiers, all these sorts of things block these cofactors and our body's ability to create these neurotransmitters. The neurotransmitters make us feel happy. Excuse me. They make us feel fit and healthy. Or they make us feel brilliant. Um, now, when we're not producing these, we begin to look for dopamine fixes and sugar or this could be bread, because bread is still sugar. Remember, all carbohydrates break down into sugar. Our body craves, or our brains crave um, this dopamine fix. So we will go for something that we shouldn't. It makes us feel good temporarily, and then it comes back down. Now, when you're transitioning into carnivore, it takes time for the body to upregulate these enzymes and pathways. It takes time to transition into becoming carnivore and utilizing the benefits. 
So what I imagine is going on is that you are feeling pretty poor. Uh, it could be to do with a lack of electrolytes as well. Electrolytes are really important. Um, but if you're not feeling brilliant, this is what is fueling your pursuit for the dopamine fixes, your cravings for these sugary treats. But understanding that it's the sugary treats themselves that are blocking the body's ability to create these neurotransmitters that is actually fueling this whole process, then you can take a step back and you can understand that you need to draw a line in the sand and you need to come away from these sugary treats. Uh, you need to persevere and power through for a day or two uh, in order for the brain and the neurotransmitters to be able to process these things. Um, 95% of neurotransmitters are created in the gut. Uh, they're created through something called the shikimate pathway. Um, and the input to the shikimate pathway is something called PEP, phosphoenolpyruvate. Phosphoenolpyruvate is blocked by glyphosate. Glyphosate is sprayed as a pesticide on all you know, foods that grow in fields, corn and broccoli and whatever else you buy in the supermarket. When you put these, the, the, these toxins into the body, it blocks the body's ability to, to create 95% of the neurotransmitters. When you're not producing these neurotransmitters, you're feeling incredibly poorly. And all of these things are constantly fueling your pursuit for this dopamine fix, uh, which is pulling you away from living a carnival lifestyle. So you, 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 need to, you need to understand that it's the foods that are fueling this. So take a step back and just power through, grin and bear it, supplement with electrolytes or lots of salts. Keep Stay hydrated. Eat when you're hungry. If you're not hungry, don't eat. And when you do eat, eat until you're satisfied. Eat lots of saturated fats, lots of omega-3s. Don't fear your fat. Putting all of these things into practice and powering through for a few days, you should be able to, to power through uh, any 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 reason or any sticking point with, with being able to, to adhere to the diet. Now, it does seem incredibly restrictive when we first begin, you know, a carnival lifestyle. And as I said, you know, to, to you guys previously, many times in the past that, I didn't wake up being carnivore. You know, I began uh, low carb and then I was dirty keto, then standard, then clean, then strict, and then gravitated into animal based and then some variation of carnivore. You don't have to be carnivore every day. If you, if you were struggling to maintain the lifestyle, then eat something else that is less toxic. So understand which foods are toxic. So avoid the grains, uh, avoid the seed oils. Put some veg in if you know if if you have to. Uh, obviously, we want to avoid that best effort if we can because of the glyphosate. But you don't have to be 100% carnivore every day. This is about um, the rule and not the exception. If you can eat healthy 30 days out of 31, you're going to see benefit. This isn't a competition. You don't. You're not classed as not being carnivore if you drink. A cup of coffee, whereas there are some strict carnivores in the world who would say that you know coffee isn't carnivore. Uh, Sean Baker eats birthday cake on his birthday, and he is one of the world's most strictest carnivores. So th there is no set rule. You know, you need everyone is on their own journey. You need to work out what works for you, and if that involves veering slightly off what you deem to be a strict carnivore lifestyle for a few hours, a day or two, or whatever it is, as long as you pick yourself up, dust yourself off, jump back on the wagon the next day. And understand that these foods are the healthiest foods on the planet. The foods that you've left behind are not serving you. Those foods are not serving you. And once you understand that, each day you can make an educated decision in regards to what you put into your mouth. Because most people don't understand those deleterious effects of eating these foods that are toxic. But once you understand, each day you can make that educated decision. On Sean Baker's birthday... He makes that educated decision to have a birthday cake because it's his birthday. I think his family have made him a birthday cake and he eats the birthday cake. That doesn't make him not carnivore. Can you see what I'm saying? It's he's not carnivore, you know, he's no longer not a carnivore because he just had a birthday cake on one day of the year. Uh, and I think sometimes we're too hard on ourselves for being too strict. And I think, Steve, after our live that we did, the 24 hour live. There were um, many of the guests that we had on who all admitted that they are not 100% strict and they eat a little bit of fruit and, and ice cream now and again. And everyone has their little go to, don't they? So, this is all about the rule and not the exception. So, I hope that helps. Yeah. I think that will help. I mean, there, you know, I'll add my two penneth, which is, uh, you know, 
you've got to remember what your why is, the why that makes you cry. So if you're doing, you're probably doing it for a particular reason. I don't think many people just go, wake up in the morning and go, right, today I'm going to be kind of, I think there's, there's reasons. So just sort of focus on the reason you're doing it. Um, anything that's worth having, it, it's never easy. Because if something worth having was easy, then we'd all have it. Um, I put something on Instagram the other day for Dr. Sarah Zaldivar. She liked what I said, which is, you cannot climb a smooth mountain. Right, So you need those bits. You need the jaggedy parts of life to be able to get somewhere. And exactly what Rich just said, don't be hard on yourself and just be as carnivore as you can be. That's it. And don't guilt yourself out if you um, mess up on one day and you have whatever. I don't know. Let's say you have donuts and you feel, oh, that's terrible. Well, make sure the next meal you have is carnivore. And just keep doing that. The thing is, the keys to the kingdom are there. Once you start feeling better, I mean, when Rich was talking about Sean Baker having his uh, birthday cake, my gut feeling, uh, no pun intended, was was if that was me, I would be in a, a, a diabetic coma within about 20 minutes. And I'm not joking because I've tried that. I've tried to have things that I used to enjoy. And firstly, I didn't actually enjoy them that much. And secondly, because most of them were sugary, carbohydrates, you know, um, honey, those sort of things. Um, literally, I had a green juice, which was, you know, it's supposed to be really healthy. I did this at the Birmingham Ball Ring a couple of years ago. I saw the stand. I thought, well, that looks good. And I said to my wife, Jane, I said, um, surely a little one of those, less than this, or right? less than this glass here. Um, that's it for scale. Um, just a green juice. It had a protein th thing you could, you know, drop into it. It was oats and it was honey. And I used to love them. And I had uh, about half of what I just showed you. And within 20 minutes, I was in a park, on the park bench, fast asleep. Absolutely killed me. Absolutely knocked me out. So that, so sometimes once you get into carnivore, the foods you used to like, which you think are fantastic, <laughs> you realize just how sweet they are and how much you don't really like them. So anyway, right. Uh, Rick is saying, uh, look at it the other way. Why would you not want to eat carnivore? I mean, yeah, it, it's all very, very tasty. I mean, it's tasty and unctuous and makes you feel well. It's great. Uh, back to giant, uh, Dutch giant Tom. Um, we're not favoring him. He's just the one putting all the questions in. So we're going to answer them. Thanks for the answer about legs. NGL eccentric training. I have not had such good workouts ever. I was doing legs and biceps and I had to pick up a barbell for curls and my legs were shaking. Well, yes, working out to failure is very good. Uh, and you're actually saying there, I'd say I had a good workout. <laughs> very good. Uh, Christopher... It's just said, hi, gents. Hey, Chris. Hi. You know Chris? Good. Um, and uh, Tom's saying, but he now knows what proper training feels like, which is really good. Uh, sorry for the long comments. I'll end it here. But the day after I ate four pounds of meat and 15 eggs, my body was screaming for food. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Oh, here we go. Here's a nice one for you, Rich. Christopher, Christopher one of your... People coming from your channel, can you please explain the mechanism of production of glycogen from lactic acid during high VO2 max bouts? Ooh, yes, I'll. Yeah, I can't remember the intricacies exactly, but there is a video available on there. It's it's um, on on my YouTube channel. It's got a green cover to it, and we go into a lot of the 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 the, the, the studies and clinical trials. But the long and the short of it is that. Um, lactate so it's not lactic acid so we call um lactic acid buildup lactic acid but lactic acid doesn't exist in the human body it's lactate and lactate is actually an energy system uh, but the reason that we burn uh when we're on carbs is that it it shows an inefficiency in in uh, the muscle and the body's ability to to buffer that lactate but what being um, ketogenic or carnivore does when we're adapted is that we have the uh, the ability so once we've upregulated um, specific enzymes and pathways, particularly the monocarboxylate transporters, we have the ability to send this lactate from the muscle to the liver, where the liver will convert it into glycogen and ship it back to the muscle, arguably at a higher rate than a carbohydrate athlete. So we have the ability to fill the muscle with glyco despite not eating carbohydrate. But that is the mechanism. We have the ability to buffer those hydrogen ions at a much higher rate 
send that lactate to the to the liver. Liver will recycle it and ship it back uh, as glycogen. Um, that's the short version. I think I go into a little bit more depth. Uh, it's not an area that I've covered for a little while, but but that 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 is the you know the the the, the long and short. And it's something that we see in you know you and I have seen that recently, Steve and we in regards to to glucose levels within the muscle, despite not eating carbohydrates, blood glucose increases. Um, incredibly high for long periods of time, whereas we we typically see a carbohydrate athlete uh, increase blood glucose in the short term, but then their blood glucose would crash. And this is why they need to constantly take uh, extra carbohydrates doing a, a long distance event like an Ironman or triathlon, for example. But being ketogenic, uh, it, that doesn't seem to be the case. We just keep this, this constant level of, of blood glucose and uh, muscle glycogen despite not eating carbohydrate, which is absolutely incredible, but heavily science-backed. Uh, a lot of the research studies and papers that we see that uh, show the opposite are done on groups of people who have not been ketogenic for longer than three weeks, groups of people who have not been taking adequate uh, electrolytes, and groups of people who have not been eating um, a protein-rich diet. Uh, and uh, a lot of these studies, I think the supernova study is one of them. I may be wrong there. Uh, but all of those are done uh, on um, groups of people who have not had time to upregulate the MCTs, the monocarboxylate transporters and, and CPTs. And uh, these are the pathways and enzymes within the body. But that's the beauty of, of being ketogenic and carnivore. And, you know, it, a question that we had last week, Steve, was how long does it become to be, you know, become adapted and I think it took me, you know, 12 months. We see, you know, typically uh, people can take three to six months before they become technically fully adapted. But I was noticing benefits all the way up to, to 12 months in. Every month or so, I would see a, a, an improvement in, in energy or athletic performance. I would see another benefit. So this is the lifestyle that just keeps giving for an awful long time. When you think that you've reached the pinnacle tomorrow, it gives you another surprise, you know, and you just keep on moving. And this is why I would say to people that consistency is key. Um, and unfortunately, if you if you do um, have, uh, I don't want to call it a cheat day, um, but, you know, if you do fall off the wagon or have those um, those targeted glyco refeeds or mental resets, whatever you want to call them, it, it does slow down that process and the body's ability to adapt. But um yeah, this is why we, yeah. we, we live the lifestyle, isn't it? And 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 continue to do so. Yep. So sorry to do a bit of housekeeping here, but we've got about 12 minutes to go. Um, and an because eight, <laughs> and, and eight o'clock, we are doing a live stream from a different platform, and we'll put the link in the comments for you to, to find that. Uh, YouTube, we get a little bit funny if we mention other platforms so they've got an algorithm if you say the name of the other platform basically your views will reduce by about 90 percent. so that's why we've been a bit cagey um anyway right here we go so we're going to just whistle through a few very quick questions i think try to get to just the questions the wonderful comments uh you know where you're bantering in the in the thing um we'll avoid for the moment so christina is asking hi guys wonder what pre post-workout supplements if any would you recommend in conjunction with the carnivore diet uh i'm not a big supplement fan but i think rich might be talking me out of that creatine for instance <laughs> maybe so anyway uh for me i don't tend to do any supplements but that may change what do you think rich yeah creatine is fantastic for for power um Big lover of creatine, big mental health benefits as well, which is something people don't talk enough about. Creatine is fantastic for the brain. Uh, leucine is another good supplement that you can use. It's one of those supplements that you don't notice an awful lot of benefit with, but it's essential for, for this activation of mTOR and building muscle. And I'm trying to get through these as quickly as we can. But uh, electrolytes, you're going to see the biggest gain. We need um, sodium potassium for the sodium potassium pump. Uh, we can't produce energy without adequate sodium potassium. So we need salts, whether it's uh, supplementing with an electrolyte or just salts itself. Um, you can take citrulline mallet, um, L-arginine, uh, taurine, uh, and um, uh, my goodness, what's the other one? Um, MCT, you could you could put together. Those are all fantastic for, um, for, for pre-workouts. Uh, leucine, I would say, to do post. Uh, if you're going to take anything, uh, and personally, I use uh, one of the one of the, one of the products that I produce, beta hydroxybutyrate, uh, exogenous ketones. Uh, they are fantastic for blocking NLRP3 inflammasome, so it, it allows me to work harder and for longer. 
uh, and it aids with recovery and it also increases EPO as well. So those are the supplements that um, that I would take. Uh, I'm off creatine. I don't take leucine because I, all I eat is meat, so I get plenty of creatine and leucine from the meat. Um, the pre-workout, uh, again, it's just a blend of amino acids, um, which you can, you can make yourself. Um, I do stock that formula in, in a pre-workout, but you can, you can get those from your local, um, health food shop. They're just natural amino acids. Um, and the electrolytes, they, they are hands down the most important thing we need. Electrolytes are essential for life, whether it comes from pink Himalayan Celtic sea salt or supplement form, we, we need electrolytes. So. That's great. my two pounds. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, and don't forget, you can go onto Richie's website. You can message us both on Instagram. Uh, and links are normally in the description. Jennifer celebrates her one-year anniversary. That's Congratulations. great. Congratulations. Uh, well done. Uh, good supporter, actually, of the YouTube channel. Thank you. Art Master Studio, thanks for that, chaps. Feel more happy to try that now. Lard or butter? Also, what's involved in your coaching? Um, lard or butter in what respect? Um, cooking? Eating, I think for me, it's a matter of taste. Personally, I like cooking in lard. What's involved in coaching? Well, coaching, depending on what you want. Um, we're not talking about exercise coaching necessarily. Uh, if anyone gets coaching with me, very often it's because they've had blood and so because I'm a qualified phlebotomist. I can go through what all the different things mean and what the levels are and why they're that level, that sort of thing. But I think most people do coaching for knowledge, accountability, motivation, just someone to talk to, bounce ideas off uh, and keep them on the straight and narrow when they're feeling like wandering away. So that's that's my quick thing. What about you, Rich? Perfect. So from an oxidative stress point of view, lard is better, but there's nothing wrong with butter. Um, I think it's, it's the, the difference is so little. It's going to come down to personal taste. But from um, from that perspective, lard technically is healthier. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with butter and coaching. Uh, I'll leave all the coaching to you, Steve. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> Sandy Lee. Here you go. Um, almost 36. Uh, female. Done Carney two separate times for four weeks. Finally lost the 20 pounds gained during COVID, but still not experiencing energy. Thyroid normal. Coffee useless. So longer carnivore. Yes. Yes. You need to do it for longer. And you will adapt, I think. Yeah, I agree. I think it's as simple as that. Keep, keep, keep on persevering. Um, double check your fats. Again, salts are really important. We keep coming back to salt, whether it's from supplement form or from uh, a natural source. You need salt. Salt is essential for creating energy. It's part of the electron transport chain. We cannot create energy without sodium and potassium. Uh, and fat, if fat is well underrated, so we, need, we need plenty of fat. Yeah. And as we said earlier, Sandy, you, you put here also very challenging to eat lots of red meat. Fat will make me feel sick. You do not have to eat lots of red meat and lots of fat. Uh, carnivore, you can do with fish. You can do it with poultry as well if you want. Uh, you don't have to eat lots. You have to eat enough to make you feel full. So if you're watching videos of Sean Baker eating five pounds of meat in one sitting and thinking you that's what I've got to do, that's not <laughs> yeah. what you've got to do. You've got to eat what makes you feel full. And you don't have to transition 100%. You can do it slowly but surely, cut out, you know, let's say bread one week and cut out pasta, cut out rice and end up eating more carnivore foods. Uh, you can have smaller meals with more frequency. I know in this space, lots of people say one meal a day, two meal a day, but you, you can, there's lots of ways, lots of ways to do it. So um, that's that. Uh, oh, here's Mike thinking that tallow is better than butter. After I finished all the butter stores from my fridge, I switched to beef tallow and I ain't going back. So that's good. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Um, let's have a look. And we I'm trying to get to everybody. Um, Gersh, hi there. Welcome to the channel. I eat sardines, hamburger and steak six days a week. On Saturdays, I eat different things like egg and cheese omelette or salmon salad or chicken. It just seems to keep boredom at bay, which is really Sounds good. Sounds fantastic to me. Yeah, perfect. Uh, last week's guest. Is cold. I just cut all artificial sweeteners. Do people typically experience withdrawal symptoms from this? My sugar cravings are high, but not hungry. Just missing the sweet taste of my supplements. Yeah, super common. Even when you look at most um, uh, supplements and things that contain sweeteners, uh, like uh, the carb killer bars, for example, um, you know they will contain things like. Uh, um, uh, oh my God! What am I thinking of? Maltitol, xylitol, 
which are polyols, which they can claim zero carbohydrate. But what many people don't understand is that many of these can still be absorbed by as much as 65%. So whereas the bar may be claiming two or three grams of carbohydrates, it's more than likely closer to nine or 10 or even beyond. Um, and these these certain polyols can cause what's called a salvatic response, which will um, stimulate that um, that sugar sensation that sugar will give. So even though there's nothing in there, this is why people who drink um, Diet Coke and Diet Pepsi, for example, still struggle to lose weight because that salvatic response will elicit an insulin response. Um, you don't get this uh, from urethritol or stevia, at least in all the tests that I've done. Um, I've tested myself and hundreds of clients and customers um, small amounts of stevia and urethritol are the two best that that, uh, that you can opt for. Uh, urethritol does officially absorb zero within the body. Um, so that is the best out of the polyols. Uh, again, obviously, these do come from plants. So in some people's perspective, they're not carnivore. Um, I do still consume stevia uh, in the form of the electrolytes that I take. It doesn't elicit any insulin response whatsoever. I had a blood glucose monitor on for two weeks and recorded those uh uh, those readings daily, I did not elicit uh, one uh, change whatsoever in, in regards to my to my insulin response. Um, but if you are going to put them in, th those are my preferred preferences, uh, erythritol and stevia, but avoid the others. Yeah, and last question for now. And then if you want to go on to the link for uh, the rest at eight o'clock, then you can, different platform. So Jennifer's saying, do you feel over time that varicose veins and spider veins can heal on zero carb carnivore? I think it could possibly, depends on damage. Yeah, I th um, what, what, what do you think, Steve? I mean, it's, I've seen some amazing, incredible things with clients that I've worked with on keto carnivore, um, things that I've been told are impossible. Um, reversing of osteoporosis, um, cancer you know, treatments, cancer reversals, um, the the stopping of advanced polycystic kidney disease in its tracks. Now, these are things that we told are impossible. Um, it makes sense um, that you know the body could recover from you know varicose veins, um, but I don't have any experience personally. Um, so I don't know if you've got anything to add to that, Steve. But it it does make sense, I guess. Yeah, I think um, visually, yes, definitely there's improvements. Uh, that doesn't mean they're fixed, but I would say that there are visual improvements. So we that know that, um, you know, the uh, the damage to arterial wall through, you know, glycation and, um, and plaque buildup can be reversed. Uh, and we've seen this, you know, time and time again recently. Uh, in, you know the calcifications. Your calcification score, Steve, has, uh, has been massively reduced since you've been carnivore. Uh, I think, in fact, it's gone to zero now, isn't it? Um, so, wouldn't no. it make sense? No, no. Uh, that's uh, I did a CAC score of six three nine. I haven't retested yet. So, right. So that'd be an interesting. There are get, people yeah. that, like Doctor Ford Brewer, you know, there's, there's plenty of people that have seen even the CAC reverse. So, um, that that that's not possible apparently there's so many things that aren't possible apparently that have actually improved so i'm going to wrap up here because we've got one minute to go next week we'll be back to normal we'll just go over time <laughs> but um so there's a link for people you go to that uh, link and at the top there is a thing to click for the next bit um at, on a different platform so thank you for watching on youtube i hope you really enjoyed it thanks for all the questions we'll be back to normal next week but we are just trying a different platform for other people actually who don't like youtube <laughs> so uh anyway hopefully we'll see you over there we're going to end this broadcast now and rich you've got the link to go into the studio haven't you i have indeed and i will be clicking on it now great cheerio so everybody have a fab evening unless you jump on the link we shall see you shortly yeah. bye